dry stone walls here are quite interesting as well. I mean, again, growing up, seeing these a lot in Cornwall when I grew up, you had a lot of very rugged bits of granite or lumps of slate, whereas a lot of these are very rounded and smooth. They've obviously come out of the river. Um, I don't know how easily they sit on top of each other when they're rounded like that. There's certainly a lot of uh, gaps where the light comes through. Is that good for wildlife or not? I don't know. It might help in not blowing the wall over, I suppose, because there's room for the air to go through. But they're all covered in lichen and moss and they're, they're very picturesque. Okay, maybe the wind theory doesn't hold up. There are a few gaps here and there. All the tips of these branches are green, brand new needles, compared to the older green of the stuff that survived the winter. Also loving these big craggy cuts. Well, they've knocked through the rock here, or maybe that's what decided the edge of the road. Obviously built the bridge here because it's quite a long way down there. And uh, here you've got all these lovely rocks here, marking the edge of the road. Bit of white water there. Always a joy to watch. More of these rocks. I love the fact that these uh, trees, beach for the most part, have actually just grown out of the rock. Or the roots have just pushed their way through the rock. I mean, look, actually tunnelling through like they've been with a pipe borer. It's amazing, isn't it? Nothing gets in the way of a tree. These trees are all beautiful and frustratingly, I've just seen two red squirrels running around in the branches. And by the time I got my camera out, and I've got my big SLR with me as well, uh, little sods have disappeared too far away to get a decent photograph. I will get a photograph of a red squirrel during this week. I mean, they're very common here and there's no gray squirrels at all, so. But they are very shy, so, um, you know, I'll be lucky if I get a decent photograph. But it's nice to have seen two already. That bodes well for the next two miles. Where I am right now is the site of uh, McGregor's Leap, uh, a famous legendary event from these parts. If you don't know what McGregor's Leap is, do Google it. But I can kind of see if it was true how he could have managed it here because the two sides of the rocks do grow out on either side of the bank that with a fairly prodigious leap you might just be able to clear the lion there. And on we go. After all the excitement of the white water just now, about a mile further on, it's all quite still. There's a nice big pool down there. I imagine that's quite popular with fishermen and fisherwomen if they uh, like a bit of that. Still quite dense woodland all around it, but cutting right through the middle of it all is this road, which I'm continuing along. As there is a path I can walk down here to the river, I thought I'd have a, actually have a walk down here. It's very pretty. Does mean, of course, I'll have to walk back up that hill again, but uh, I think it will be worth it for the view. There we are, River's Edge, Bluebells. Shame the sun's gone in, but still. Smashing view. Look at that. Put all the bluebells and into the woods there. I feel a million miles from civilization at the moment. And uh, not quite, but I'm at least a couple of miles from civilization. So I'd better get back on the track. I've just walked past all this lovely gorse and the air just smells of coconut. It's amazing. I mean, I love the smell of gorse anyway, but that lovely fragrant coconut smell the flowers give off, it's really concentrated here. The whole, the whole area, the whole road smells of coconut. It's really, really pleasant. Feels like I've just come out of the shower having used some nice expensive shower gel. Oh, that is a lovely smell. I wish you could capture it on video. I read a book earlier this year called How to Read a Tree by Tristan Gooley, very good book. And uh, one of the things I remember from the book was where he was talking about how deciduous trees and evergreen trees have different methods of transporting water up through their bodies. Um, 
and evergreen trees are much better at hanging on to water and a lot better at living in environments where the water is, uh, where there's a lot less water. So consequently on the lower slopes of hills you tend to get deciduous trees. I mean here we've got sycamore and beech and a few other things like that. And then when you get up onto the higher parts of the hills you get the uh, you get the darker evergreens, you get the pines, the spruces, etc, etc. So you'll quite often look at a hill and you'll see a line of dark trees at the top, which is the evergreens, and then the deciduous trees below, which are lighter green. I thought that was quite interesting. Been walking uphill for about an hour now, so um, I'm about halfway there, so uh, time to actually go downhill for a bit and give my poor old back a bit of a rest. But the scenery is still stunning. Done about two miles now, and it's really hard to explain how quiet it is here. There's no road noise, there's no aircraft noise. There's birds. They stopped now, but there was a distant cuckoo. And there's a slight rush from the river. It's wonderful. It really is lovely. Makes you realise how noisy the world normally is. Because it's ambient, we hardly notice it anymore. But when it's not there, it's just amazing how quiet it is. There's the cuckoo. Fabulous. The road narrows here, either because they, well, they didn't or couldn't. Make it any wider. I mean, there's are some big lumps of old rock here, all covered in moss now. So I'm being extra wary for vehicles because there aren't that many, but uh, they do tend to zip along here. Well, as you can see, I'm now down the bottom of the valley. Uh, earlier you had some nice looking down views on the river, particularly on the white water. Now it's all smooth again, and I'm down near the bottom of the glen, and uh, I'm going to have to start rising up again in a minute. But for the moment, it's nice to be down here. And uh, I'll have a little rest for five minutes, I think. About another mile to go. Now, here's a bit of fun. Time for me to get my Indiana Jones on, because here is a walking suspension bridge. And it's very, very creaky and squeaky and bouncy. Shall I go across? Of course I'm going to go across. Uh, get through the gate first. Look at this there. Oh, the whole thing is moving up and down as I walk. It's great fun. But it's lovely. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, the view up the river and the view down the river is amazing. And I can smell all that gorse, all that coconut smells coming across here. But yeah, this is... Uh, <laughs> I, can't, I can't begin to tell you how much it's swaying side to side and bouncing up and down. It's great. And the more I move, the more it sways. I know I'm not going to go to the end because uh, that's not my way home. I'm going to go this way. It's a good job I laugh in the face of danger, isn't it? Right, on we go again. Okay, so I'm now leaving the river and the main road and going up here. This is the last leg of my journey now. This is the uh, entrance to Chest Hill House and more of those fantastic weather rock gate posts and uh, yes we're going up here I've still got a fair old walk most of us uphill but I'm now on the South Chest Hill estate where I'm staying so nearly home about another quarter of an hour 20 minutes I'll be there and there's Chest Hill in the distance so that's my walk complete oh this is pretty isn't it that's my walk complete. I have now walked about three, three and a half miles uh, from Fortingall all the way back to the South Chesthill Estate and Chesthill House. It's been really rather splendid. Um, I'm probably sounding more puffed than I actually am. I don't feel tired at all. I think it was that last going over the bridge and then going down to the river and back again. So a cup of tea, watch the sheep and the waterfall through the window. Um, see if any deer come out onto the lawn and probably just fall asleep in an armchair this afternoon in the sunshine. So um, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.